Okay, now let's count the orders. Remember the form of HNR? We had the usual H plus a delta H term. That is the HNR. And the usual H contains MC squared alpha squared term. And the delta H term is MC squared Now let me remember the form. Yes. <clears throat> there's an overall MC squared, obviously. And there's alpha squared times, there's alpha squared times beta squared, which is beta to the four or well, let me write it as alpha squared times beta squared. If you look at the explicit form of the delta H I have given to you, there are two sigma dot P's and divided by M squared C squared, which gives beta squared. And there's inside, there's E prime minus V, which is alpha squared times MC squared. So this is the order. MC, MC squared is overall because being Hamiltonian, it must be that way anyway. So this one is order MC squared times alpha squared. Let's keep track of the betas only. So beta squared, the first term is beta squared, then second term is beta to the four. Okay. Fine. So obviously we are going to retain in this new H the terms up to beta to the four. How about this one now? Is it the entire HNR? If it is the entire HNR, it's going to have beta squared and beta to the four terms. This one is already P squared divided by M squared C squared is another beta squared. So the lowest one is beta to the four and highest one is six. So I have to take here only the H Coulomb. I have to take only the H Coulomb so that it is beta squared times another beta squared beta to the four, which is consistent with this order. Okay. Now let's count, that's E prime of course, it looks ugly. Now let's count the order in here. There is beta squared and beta squared beta to the four. Lowest order is beta squared beta to the sixth. So there is no contribution from that at all that is to be thrown away. And so let me cleanly rewrite everything. You are not taking everything in the game. You are selecting some of them and throwing away the others on the basis of the orders. Okay, so what is it? So, so H non-relativistic to the relevant order is H non-relativistic original minus 1 over 8 M squared C squared H Coulomb and P squared only from there plus that term. Okay. Why? 
Let me work them out in detail. So I have here H coulomb plus delta H already from NR. And this one is what? Minus 1 over 8 m squared c squared. And H coulomb is just the usual p squared over 2m plus v, correct? So you have from the leading first term, there's p squared and p squared, and I commutate it is twice p squared and p squared. So it's twice p squared squared. So what are the terms all together? So there is 1 over 2m, and there is twice coming from here and p squared squared. Then minus 1 over 8 m squared c squared v p squared and this one. Looks simple that we could reduce to such a simple form, although our starting point was horrendous, right? Some some of you may not agree with me that this looks simple, but anyway, this is the simplest one can get, obviously. So the twos cancel. This is 1 over 8 m cubed c squared, p squared to the squared. So the kinetic energy correction term came out automatically, obviously. So h coulomb plus the delta h, which we, whose form we know quite well, minus p squared squared divided by 8 m cubed c squared. Now, how about this one? I will write this in the following manner. It's v and p squared. V is a function, obviously, so this anti-commutator ordering is important. I can, but e prime is a number. <laughs> I can convert this into an anti-commutator by, well, anti-commutator is e prime p squared plus p squared e prime, which is equal to itself. So if I divide this by two, OK, let me not erase it, but let me write it explicitly as follows. e prime p squared divided by 8 m squared c squared. I hope you appreciate this. What is this equal to? This is equal to 2 e prime p squared, because this is a number. That 2 cancels 8, converts it into that. But I have written it in this fashion so that I can combine these two terms together. Let me do it. Plus 1 over uh, plus 1 over 8 m squared c squared e prime minus v p squared. You see the reason why I have done it that way. E prime, there's a plus sign in here, and there's minus sign in here, e prime minus v. Very good. So what do I have? Let me write what I have now cleanly. This is the modified non-relativistic Hamiltonian in association with the normalized C. So all together, HC is the usual Coulomb minus that nice kinetic energy correction term, which just popped up. It came out on its own, right, as a result of this computation. So, so what are the additional terms? There are several additional terms. Let me put them together. The one is this one. m squared c squared e prime minus v p 
squared. And there is the delta H. Let me remind you what delta H was. Delta H was minus 1 over 4 m squared c squared sigma dot p e prime minus v sigma dot p. Good. So we have everything now for the sigma equation. I will combine these two and write it as 1 over 8 m squared c squared this anti-commutator. So it is p squared e prime minus v. Am I allowed to write it in such a way? a b plus b a. I have written it p squared. Minus twice twice sigma dot p e prime minus v sigma dot p. This is the additional term. Beautiful, isn't it? And uh, this Coulomb plus kinetic energy term. And everything else is this term. So I invite you to prove the following identity to convert this into the following form. I, instead of driving it on the board, I will give you the result and I will ask you to demonstrate this. Okay, please prove that this one is equal to sigma dot p double commutator sigma dot p e prime minus v prove Well, you can uh, prefer the easy way of taking this and reducing it to the original expression. Of course, that's not, that doesn't require too much intellectual effort. The actual thing is to go from here to there. You have to develop some sort of identity yourself. So, some of you know it quite well. Some do not, so. Please do it when it's still enjoy, whichever way you prefer, please do it, however. So it's, after that, we have the following expression for the, now, reduced non-relativistic Hamiltonian associated with the normalized spinner C becomes the following. <coughs> The Coulomb Hamiltonian minus the kinetic energy correction. Well, notice that I'm not writing it p to the 4. P, p to the 4 is not p squared squared. That's something else. It is p squared squared. Because p squared vector is px squared plus py squared plus pz squared, the overall squared. Whereas p to the 4 vector doesn't mean anything. You can, well, that's just a notation and it doesn't have that particular meaning. So that's the reason why I go through this cumbersome effort of writing it p squared squared. Because in certain exams I have seen it's written as p to the 4. Please don't use such irrelevant, I don't, I don't want to call it nonsense, irrelevant notation, okay. Now, so this was the demonstration of this theorem and notice, however, that E prime is a number, right? As e prime is a number, this commutator, it e prime drops, and it is this is the function only. 
So it survives with a minus sign. Now it looks really, it started looking beautiful, this additional piece. Hopefully, this two, uh, that last term is going to lead us to two, te two terms, hopefully. One is the spin orbit, the other is the Darwin. Because the kinetic term, kinetic energy correction came out already on its own through, from in the intermediate steps. How do I now proceed? We have to proceed to, the, to uh, compute this last term. Okay, so my next task is to compute this and see whether we can uh, indeed get the correct terms that we are expecting. You may wish to check the dimensions perhaps at some point. For instance, if you write this as 2mc, 2mc, there's an additional four, uh, if, uh, to 2, sigma dot p divided by 2mc and sigma dot p divided by 2mc. p uh, m's cancel and that's order beta and beta. So this is beta squared altogether and there is an mc squared times beta squared, mc squared times beta to the 4. It is indeed same order of the spin orbit and Darwin. So you, so you can check that dimensions are correct. Shall I repeat? So mb, so th this is order beta, this is order beta, and this v is order, the, all the energies are order, mc squared times alpha squared, right? That's typical or, uh, potentials and kinetic energies and total energies. So altogether, this, what is the entire thing is order of? Order mc squared times beta squared alpha squared, beta to the four, or alpha to the four if you want, they are the same, right? Are those the typical hyperfine corrections? Yes, alpha to the 4 mc squared was the typical correction. Both spin orbit and Darwin and the kinetic energy correction. Kinetic energy correction is already there. It's taken care of. So this beautiful expression is going to lead us to the spin orbit and the Darwin. Let's see. How do we get those? Okay. Let me start computing the commutator. Which commutator? For example, let's start with the sigma dot PB. Sigma dot P B. What is this equal to? That is sigma I P I. V is in the orbital space. It doesn't carry any spin index. So sigma I P I V. P I V is minus I H bar the gradient of V. So this is equal to minus i h bar sigma dot del b. E is, well let me remind you the relationship between del v and the electric field. What is del v in electric field? This is E times E, right? Because electric field is minus gradient of phi. V is D minus E times the phi. So when you put them together, del B is the E times electric field. Because I want to keep that track of, in, the, in terms of that electric field. Minus IH bar E. Sigma dot E is the expression of the result of the first commutator. Okay. 
Now, what about this, the entire commutator, the double commutator? So, double commutator is equal to sigma dot p, commutator of sigma dot p with this one already. So, minus i h e sigma dot e. So, what is it? It is equal to minus i h bar e sigma dot p sigma dot e. So I have to compute this commutator now, sigma dot p sigma dot e. Now I have to be careful in here because this, uh, when it is the commutator of such matrices, remember, sigmas do not commute among themselves and p and e do not commute because p is the gradient. So there are two types of operators entering. One is related to the spin space, the matrix nature, the other is the ordinary space, but the momentum. So in order to not to make any mistakes, I will do the following notation. Let me write this commutator and introducing the indices if you want. Sigma i pi sigma j ej sigma j ej sigma i pi Well, you may think that I'm overreacting to it. If you can find a shorter cut, please do it that way, okay? So this is sigma i, sigma j. I keep the orders carefully, p i, e j, minus sigma j, sigma i, e j, p i, e j, sorry. Now, of course, both here, delta ij plus, plus i times epsilon ijk sigma k from this first factor and from this second factor, I have delta ij, that doesn't, ij, j, i doesn't matter, plus i times epsilon j i k sigma k. Well, let me take care of the delta ij terms first. So the delta ij terms first gives me, the, there is the overall minus ih bar e, that is there, that's there already. p dot e minus e dot p from the first terms. From the second terms, it is epsilon i j k, the epsilon j i k. So if I change the order, the second sign becomes plus. So plus i epsilon i j k sigma k p i e j. I hope you can see it. E j p i. That sign is important. Okay. All right. Let me now start computing those expressions in the brackets in here, this P involving P and E's. First of all, what is the commutator of P, I, E, J? It is minus I, H bar, delta I, E, J, right? Good. If I take the I equals J, that is P 
P1, E1, P2, E2, P3, E3, and then sum. Well, you see, we have a convention of repeated indices are summed over. When it's not the case, then we have to explain. So that's what I'm doing now. P1, E1 is minus IH bar D1, D1, E1. And similarly, 2 and 2, D2, E2, 3 and 3, D3, E3. If I now sum, do I get the P dot E minus E dot P? Indeed I do, sum. This gives me P dot E minus E dot P. Why? Because P1, E1 plus P2, E2 plus P3, E3 minus E1, P1, E2. Well, that's the summation of these three, which gives me in the right hand side minus IH bar del E. Okay, very good. So let's keep it aside. That, so I have been able to compute this first term, which is nice because if you remember, if you remember that E is minus E times phi, so yes, E is electron charge is minus, so minus E times phi. So this is minus E times del phi. Del phi is, well, I will do that at the end. Forget it, forget it. Now, let me not focus on, it. let's keep, let me keep it as divergence of E. The second one, second term is more, uh, not that easy. It is PI EJ plus EJ PI. So how do I do that? Again, I will refer to this commutator. So PI EJ plus EJ <coughs> PI is equal to <coughs> there's an overall epsilon IJK in the front, but let me forget it. So it is going to be the following. I would like to write it in the form of EJPI. I want to have the P all the way to the right. So what is the PI EJ from there? PI EJ from there is EJPI minus IH bar delta I EJ. So this is altogether twice EJ PI minus IH bar delta I EJ. Okay. Well, you may say, so, so what? Big deal? No, but I'm just using the commutator, which is valid for everything. So let me put this together. The entire expression is what? What is the entire expression? Let me do it cleanly. That additional piece in there is <clears throat> I epsilon IJK sigma K times PI EJ plus EJ PI is equal to now. I times epsilon IJK sigma K times this expression twice EJ PI minus IH bar delta IEJ. Okay, so twice I epsilon IJK sigma K E j p i minus plus plus h bar sigma k epsilon i j k d i e j okay 
So let me write everything together now. I have everything. So double commutator is is equal to minus i h bar e is the term which is the overall term out times this term which is minus i h bar delta e is the first term plus the second term, which, which are those terms, plus 2i epsilon ijk. Well, if you want, perhaps I'll write it slightly differently in the following fashion. Sigma k epsilon ijk ej pi, that term, plus epsilon sigma k epsilon i j k d i e j so this is the entire double commutator and we have the coefficients in the front let me not worry about it let me now turn my attention to the physics well the coulomb problem that is now what is the coulomb problem Coulomb potential of the, say here, hydrogen atom is the Coulomb potential of a plus charge, right? E over R, because proton is plus and positively charged. <coughs> the Coulomb potential from potential energy is minus the electron charge times the potential, which is minus the E squared over R. Good. What about the electric field? How is it related to the potential? As we have seen it several times, this is static, electrostatic. There is no magnetic potential or anything. So minus the delta I. So it is equal to what? E times R divided by R cubed, right? Unit vector, 1 over R squared. That's the, that's the electric field. And what about the... Divergence. I need the divergence of this for the first term, and I need the curl of it for the second term. Okay, perhaps I should get rid of this curl term first. Epsilon i j k d i e j. is what? Epsilon i j k times e times r j divided by r cube and times there is a di, sorry. di There is the charge here, E. You'll see, you will see, we can see that immediately it's zero. Why? Because DIRJ gives you delta IJ due to the epsilon IJK, that's zero. DI 1 over R cube gives you an R, R to the minus, uh, minus 3 times R to the minus 4 times RI in the unit direction. I and J, symmetric again, zero. So this curl term nicely vanishes, but which is only natural, right? We know that in the electrostatic, divergence of E is equal to minus 4 pi times the density and curl of E is equal to zero. Because curl of E is the, the Maxwell displacement law, it is proportional to 1 over C times dB dt. As there is no magnetism and there is no time dependence, it is zero, but I am demonstrating it for you. Del cross E is equal to zero, nice. So this term is gone. How nice. There are two terms left. This one and that one. So let me write it here and then I'll go to the corner and finish it. So what is it? Minus and minus is plus. I and I is minus. Minus h bar squared e 
The divergence of E, I will compute the divergence in a moment. It is minus 4 pi times the rho, right, density, which is the single charge. So we know that result already. Plus this thing, let me write it cleanly as well. Minus I and I is minus, and there's another minus sign, plus twice H E sigma K times epsilon I J K E J P I. I'm being careful with the signs. I guess I have been. I and I is minus. There's a minus sign. It becomes plus twice H E. Okay. So this is the double commutator. I'm going to finish it with the correct coefficients now of the double commutator. Here is the double commutator. So I can come underneath and write this additional piece as minus 1 over 8 m c squared c m squared c squared times minus h bar squared e, the divergence of e, plus 2 h bar e Sigma K, Epsilon I, J, K, E, J, P, I. Sigma K, Epsilon I, J, K, E, J, P, I. Okay. E, J, P, I. Yes, correct. All right. What is the EJ that I have computed up? EJ that I have computed up is E times RJ divided by R cube, correct? I have done it already. So what do I have in here? What I have in here is twice H E squared times sigma K times Epsilon I J K R J P I divided by R cube. R J P I R cube. Signs are correct and E squared is correct. What is this? If I write it K I J, then it is J I order, therefore it is minus. LK. So this entire thing is now minus 2 H E squared times sigma K LK divided by R cube. What is this relationship between the S and the sigma? S is h bar over 2 sigma, sigma is 2s over h bar. Sigma is equal to 2s over h bar. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was panicking, but there's no need because I have the overall, that overall thing, I forgot. Okay, let me write everything cleanly now. So this is equal to, that's equal to E h bar squared. E h bar squared divided by 8 m squared c squared times delta e from the first term and from the second term I have plus now because there's minus 2 and minus 8 plus h bar e squared divided by 4 m squared c squared yes sigma dot l divided by r cube. 
Now I can put the expression in. S is sigma over uh, h bar over 2 sigma, so it is 2s over h bar. So this becomes now, indeed, e squared over twice m squared c squared s dot l or l dot s, whichever r cube. Isn't this beautiful? The spin orbit term came from there. Now what about this one? What is the what is the delta E? Now a little bit of electromagnetism now. What is the delta E? It is if you want, if you work out the E uh, in terms of the e things, you get the following. 4 pi E. Remember, E is the charge of the positively charged proton, which is a singular, the, the, the point-like object. So it is 4 pi E. If you want to see the contact with the... Okay, so that's it. That's the charge density integrated overall, that's 4 pi e. So if I write this 4 pi e up, 4 pi e, then the first term becomes pi e squared h bar squared divided by twice m squared c squared That's much better than delta cube x. This is the equation, right, for the positively charged nucleus. 4 pi e times the delta cube x from your electrodynamics. Is this the correct Darwin? Pi? Yeah. It's the correct Darwin. pi e squared h bar squared divided by 2m squared c squared d cube x. So we are done. What we have called h non-relativistic c. I put this on, in, on purpose because it is a normalized spinner which satisfy h time c equals e prime time c. So this becomes the Coulomb plus all the correct corrections. That is the kinetic, if delta H1 is the kinetic energy correction, We're coming from relativity, that minus P squared squared 8 M cubed C squared. And the delta H2 is the spin orbit with the correct sign and the coefficients and all that. And the Darwin is beautifully coming out to be with the correct coefficients and the signs. So it is indeed a beautiful theory, this direct theory, because it gave us this fine, hyperfine structure of the hydrogen atom correctly. Actually, it was a time of discoveries which follows each other one week after. This was the computation carried out by Schrodinger first, through the wrong equation, Klein-Gordon as he realized that Klein-Gordon, not only that it has the pathologies associated with the normalization, it didn't pr reproduce the correct hyperfine structure of the hydrogen, no spin orbit, for instance. You could get the Klein-Gordon, even in the Klein-Gordon, you could get the Darwin and the kinetic energy correction, but no spin orbit because the object didn't describe a spin flow object. So it was thrown away and picked up by someone else called the Klein and Gordon. But anyway, so you see this direct theory is a beautiful theory which enabled us to explain this hyperfine structure with the correct coefficients and the G correct gyromagnetic ratio. So we have a beautiful theory in hand. We can pursue our discussion towards covariance next week.
because that's the only missing link. They have to show that this equation is indeed covariant. And then as time permits, we we'll look for the spinor solutions for the general case. We have seen the simplest case, but simplest case was easy, obviously. Spinors at rest. Now we are going to construct the spinor solutions moving with arbitrary velocity and discuss their properties, and that's going to take us to the end of the semester, which is not too far away. Okay.